Let's go. Coming up, we see Dazza hitting up the GTs. Welcome to my fishing place, the place to be. The place to be all right, Kezza. Now, Dazza. A couple of weeks ago, up the Coral Sea with Nomad once again. Um, mate, I know you've been there a few times, so what's the big attraction about the Coral Sea? I love catching GTs. They're one of the hardest fighting fish in the ocean. They, it's just a brutal tug of war when you hook one of these suckers. You're throwing massive lures on big gear, and it's it's just such a lot of, it's such a buzz, it's a lot of fun. Those lures are massive. Right? Yeah, they're, yeah, yeah, it's it's big gear, like, and um, yeah, let's take a fish here. It's one of the mascot fish here is uh, modelled after one of the GTs caught up there in the Coral Sea a few couple of trips a ago. Big fish, fifty kilos that one. Is that big right? fish? Yeah. Big fish. The footage of when you fly in and then you drive sort of up, it looks beautiful. It's a bay, like the water looks just amazing. Oh, that, is that typical? That, of the it it is. I mean, it's just, it can blow. You know, don't worry. You know, you're out in the middle of the sea, it can you know, blow 25, 30 knots, and you know, it, it can be tough fishing. But you know, when you get those days when it's just still and you're looking out and you just, you can see these bombies, you, you just think, how could there not be fish here? You know, and you'll drive past them. I've you know, heard that before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's an amazing place. And yet sometimes you'll think, you know, you'll drive past 10 places where you think, look, there's got to be fish here. But, you know, you're looking for a pressure edge yeah. on the edge of a reef and, you know, that's where we'll be holding bait and that's where the big GTs will be, you know. So to catch something like that, you're using massive lures. This one was what, hundred dollars? That's an expensive one, that one. Yeah. And you know. said twenty dollars worth of just hooks and hardware. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So yeah. hundred and twenty dollars just on the lure kind of makes our well, jackals I mean, you, look a little yeah. cheap. Yeah. Well, you don't have to do them quite that expensive. That uh, you know, and in fact, one exactly like this. I took two of these up because I thought you know I'll lash out, get a couple of expensive lures, and. Um, First day out, well not first day, I think second day out, but I thought I'll tie on the mustard, the big, you know, the big Patriot. Cast, three casts, four casts, next thing, bang, GG. Next thing, <laughs> gone. There goes Jaden and Jordy Bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Should put it on the table. <laughs> when you say gone, what pound line? We're talking a hundred pound braid, probably two hundred pound leader, and just just can't stop them. So they smoke you on a hundred pound Mate, braid. I can do this this drag up, so I can barely pull it off, and these things just tear it off, tear it off, but like you would not believe. Unbelievable. Wow. So after that, put on a relatively cheap, a little about half the price, and biggest fix of the trip, about you know, close on 40 kilos. Coming up after the break, we got some more hot fishing action. Let's go. The first fish I've hooked that I lost a lot, I've hooked on this side of the bommie. So I've cast at the bommie, the fish has hit my side of the bommie, but still managed to somehow, you know, bust me off. The next fish, I've cast over the bommie, the fish has hooked me on the other side of this bommie. Unbelievable, and you think, instantly gonna be gone. Somehow, I've yelled out, drive, 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 and the boat's torn around the other side of the bommie, we managed to get in this fish. And uh, there's some great footage.
So Nazza, as you know, on uh, my fishing place, we have the lure board, which is slowly starting to fill up. So what's a lure that's got a story to it and one you'd like to put on the board? Okay, well, it's probably not been caught the biggest, but one of those lures up there um, was one of the last me all day. Now on a trip like that, for a lure, to last you all day is a big, is a big, is it? <laughs> it's, and not get snapped off. It, okay. it not get snapped off, I've caught six GTs one day, which is, you know, not the most GTs ever caught in a day, but you know, a good number, but didn't lose a lure all day. So I'll put up the old, this nice little, little stick bait here. It's a little bit bigger than snappy. Now here's a technical question, why the double hooks instead of a treble on the front there? Right, well treble hooks on those bigger lures, I mean you're talking a real big treble and it can really um, probably damage the fish's mouth a bit. So we use singles because it cause a little bit less damage on the fish but also those heavy duty singles, you can set the hook better, it holds on better than a treble. I might grab them just so I can hold it up and the camera can see what the what we're talking about. I don't know if you can capture that, but that right we, there, you, you see we, we crush the barbs, all the barbs are crushed, yep. and at the front there what we do is, um, or not everyone does, but a, 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 one of the guides taught me a few years ago, is we put two of those SJ11s together, with a little, I don't know if you can see that, but a little zip tie around them, holds them together, so when you can see the lure, when that's sitting back, Technically, that should sit out a little bit from the lure, okay? Mm. So your hooks are out there, so the fish is grabbing it, it's getting hooked there, or the one up behind. So that's the way I like to rig. Mm. Um, some guys rig a little bit different. In fact, um, you see this lure here, and this was working one time. Sometimes I like to just put a runner, like a, a single hook on a bit of cord out the front. Um, probably, you know, sometimes the fish are different. You're hitting them from the side, from the front, um, and that can work quite well with that. As you can see, that lure caught quite a few fish one year. Um, but I generally prefer that type of rigging when I rig up. So um, with these hooks virtually barbless, yeah. you've got to keep the pressure on the whole oh, yeah. time. You let the yeah. pressure off, the fish is gone. Yeah, the... In fact, there's a there's a couple of shots where you don't, you're not holding the rod here, you jam it in under your leg. Yeah, it again, looks it... weird. Tell us. Okay, what, well, what a, lot of people, a lot of people laugh at that. Like A lot of people use the gimbals. I don't like the gimbals because you sort of stuff around trying to get your thing into a gimbal. But one of the um, South African guide, actually, a great fisherman out of South Africa, once taught me that. He, he said, you jam it under your leg and you can get some amazing just leverage like that from under, right on, under your leg there. So. Isn't there the uh, issue of collateral damage if... Uh... You've got to be a little careful. <laughs> a little careful. <laughs> There's no better. It, look, it's just, it's one of those trips of a lifetime where you get to uh, get out there where no one else really fishes. You'll throw your lure in and you'll just get pack attacked by mm. 20 and 30 kilo GTs or maybe a dozen of them just wow. trying to get to your lure. It's unbelievable fishing. It's lettuce. Stop it. It's lettuce. Let's just see. Let's get lettuce. Let's get Coming up after the break, we got some more hot fishing action. Let's go. The latest trip um, was something different. This time was the first time of um, been able to hop out on a, on a, on a uh, sand cave sort of thing. Yep. So we, a few guys had caught some fish there the day before and then we thought, well, we'll try this little run out of, of this sort of coral cave. And uh, so we pulled up on the sand and I've wanted, I've actually used just, it was only a little, I don't know, little, but you know, this is only this is one of their smallest dog tooth stick baits. And um, just it looked to be about two meters of water and you can sort of see a few fish going by first cast out and out of nowhere GT whack bang here I am fighting this fish on the sand That's and it was about um, you know I'm gonna say 15 20 kilo fish have a look at some of this footage of the GT of the sand
with the foot on the high tide they were sort of sitting up in you know some some holes and as that water was running off they were sort of exiting the size of the fish that hit you just you wouldn't have thought it was there you know you would you'd think small gts but you know out of nowhere big gt was there an issue with the camera on this last trip Yes, we did have an issue with the camera. Very, very first day, headed out. We're, and not, looking, about... we're not looking at the camera right now. <laughs> we're not, we're not. There's no smile and shaking of the head back there. No, we're... Here we are, we've arrived in the Coral Sea. Premier place to fish, premier place to film some great footage. <laughs> Head out. Within 15 minutes we've pulled up. Prime spot, looked lovely. A little bit white, a little bit bubbly, wave where we were, a little bit more wave than we first ex than we expected. And sure enough, as I think about five minutes before I caught my first fish, <laughs> um, we got swamped by a wave and just happened to be bending over the time, wave over the side of the boat, and <laughs> camera gone. Oh, on the first day. The first day. But all credit to the cameraman, we spent the next five days with GoPros and Sonys. Probably iPhones. Yeah, iPhones. Um, to capture all the footage that we, yeah. And there's of, some awesome footage Oh, there's there. some great footage, there's some great footage. After the break, we got some more hot fishing action. So GTs, yep, we we know about the big GTs. Um, what what other fish are you chasing when you're up there? On some of those reefs, it's the variety of species as well. So it's not just GTs. I mean, you know, you will go out days where you are just Hardcore looking for well, the GTs. Is that coral trout on a yeah, nomad trip? That was on a nomad and, trip. And you got a soft plastic there. Yeah. So some days we might go looking for some coral trout um, and some coral trouts um, and all sorts of you know, reefies. Another great fish to catch up there. You obviously don't eat red bass, but they are one angry fish. Not as big and not a little bit lighter tackle. They are a lot of fun. And you're looking down, there's sharks, there's GTs, there's all manner of fish. In fact, we even went for a bit of a dive down there and have a look. Dive down on a couple of the sharks. We go down for a shark. There's so much life around that boat. There's so much life on the reef up there. It's just, it's, it's a lot of fun. Mm. So, you know, if you ever get the chance, um, head up to the Coral Sea and have a fish.
If you had bait, could you just drop a bottom bounce where the mothership is and pull fish up? Oh, absolutely, they do it every time. Oh, the boys are always out there fishing at night time. How if, would you stop fishing? Well, well in fact, one I uh, took up some X traps one year. They, I think I bought them in America even before they came out in Australia. Those the big, you know, X thirties, whatever they are. And um, got back to the mothership and I said, "Oh, look at this, boys! I tied on a see how these X traps swim, just to show the boys how they swim." Two or three cranks, three GTs out of nowhere, just monstered this thing and. Oh, oh. oh. gonna tie another one, I see. Gotta tie another one. Zik. Dunk, dunk, dunk. Gone again, because the mothership's you know, anchored in a bay, yeah, yeah, yeah. so they're, they're heading straight to bombies. So, two <laughs> brand new X traps. Let's go. Gone. The place to be. It was the place to be. <laughs> Rock. <laughs> and don't forget to follow us on Instagram at My Fishing Place. We are super keen to tell your fishing story, so please send us in your favourite picture or a little bit of footage and then give us a 30 second explanation of that fish and that catch. We'd love to play it. Make sure you email us to the address at the bottom of the screen. Right now we've lost all motivation. Troops morale is very low. The least we can do is just keep trying to get a decent sized Murray cut. The definition of an insanity, fishing the same holes with the same lures expecting a different result. Let's go.